it looks like it will be a small session today, I think, but that's okay. Um, okay you've got lots of questions, Drew. Yeah. We, well, I, it'd be quite nice to have a, you know, easy, easy um, talking rather than maybe chatting, but I'll just, I'll just do the intro anyway and give a bit of housekeeping. Um, welcome to another ACF Chat Fridays. This is our open office hours with the ACF team, which are large in numbers in comparison to non-ACF people, but that's really good. Um, we do this every other Friday, most of the time, unless public holidays and, and whatever um, clashes. We do record the sessions and we put them up on YouTube. And we also do a blog post on the ACF site. So people who don't, who can't, uh, can't make the session can always catch up with the video. And we, Mike does a really good text breakdown of what we talk about in Q&A, which is good. Uh, we do have the Q&A format on Zoom where you can type questions if you like, or if you don't see the Q&A button, uh, next to the share screen button, I think in Zoom, you can always put them in the chat. And as there's only two people at the moment, maybe a few more that join, we can just raise hands, unmute, go go wild. Um, I'm just going to run through some other updates and uh, just some news, I guess, from ACF. So we can, if you if you do have a a question burning, feel free to type it now in the Q and A, and then we can get those loaded up. Uh, so good news so far. ACF has made the final of this year's Talk Mags Plugin Madness competition, which is a kind of a fun bracket style uh, competition pitting plugins against each other. Uh, we have made the final for the second year running and we are up against the mighty WooCommerce. So if you do spare or have uh, some moments to spare to go vote for us and hopefully we can make it two years in a row winning that, that'd be nice. Uh, what else have we done? We, I think since we last met, we have released ACF 628 which uh, brings, was good timing. It re was released the same day as WordPress 6.5. We brought some compatibility with um, a couple of things with WordPress 6.5. Our translations, which are a bit under the hood, are now working with the performant translations that they brought in 65. So things just a bit quicker for, for people using ACF with translated strings. And we brought support for the block bindings API, which is pretty huge, pretty new, big thing in 6.5. So you can connect blocks uh, certain blocks and their attributes, like the the value of a paragraph attribute, a uh, paragraph block, or the image attribute of an image block, you can connect those pieces of data to an ACF field. So that's uh, as, as you can with other metadata. But you know we brought support for block bindings in ACF six two eight. So that's pretty big. Uh, we had a release not not long after, which was ACF six two nine with a load of bugs fixed which came out uh, a week later, I think. Monday. Yeah, I'm losing all track of time. Yeah. It's the school <laughs> holidays, week. the kids are off and it's, yeah. What else are we doing? Uh, yeah, we we are on the home stretch, I guess, of ACF 6.3. We're hoping to get a, a beta release out later or at near the end of the month, all fingers you know crossed. Uh, if you are looking to, or if you'd like to test out the beta, the best thing to do is sign up to our beta news email list. Sorry, I'm literally peppering the chat with link after link after link. Um, but yeah, that's the best place to sign up to hear when we do uh, ship beta releases, our release candidate um, versions, and you can go and test it. There's a couple of things that if you're using ACF blocks that are coming to 6.3 that you'd like, you probably want to test and, and that would be really helpful for us to get that feedback. Those are that adding support for field validation rules that you define in for the ACF fields blocks with those fields now um, support that validation. So if you've got a required field, you try and save the post editor and you haven't filled out that field on the block, it now says, oh, this is required or this number format, this number field must be, you know, greater than three or less than 10, that kind of stuff. The validation it should now be supported. So that's coming to 6.3. Um, and we're also introducing a feature to allow you to create an ACF block and, and tell ACF to save the field data to the post meta table as you would do with post meta or page meta at, at a post level um, instead of saving that the data for the fields for the block in the post content, which is a bit um, not that not a nice for data format. And especially if you want that data to be easily searchable or accessible um, in its own sort of row of the post meta table. Um, so that those are two sort of big things coming to 6.3 that 
yeah, if you if you do get a chance to test the beta, we would appreciate that. Uh, and also, we are been going through sort of a, a, I guess, a phase of planning for the rest of the year, looking at what we want to try and bring to you for the next couple of major releases, how we want 2024 to shape out. Um, so this is a really good time to, uh, we've got this public feedback board here, it's a really good time for you to think about what, what means the most to you from ACF, what is lacking, what would you really love to see us bring to ACF. The feedback board there, it's a, it's a board you can post ideas, uh, improvement suggestions, feature requests, but you can also go and vote on anything else that anybody else has put on there. So we kind of get to see that, the popularity of, of things that are being requested and that helps us shape the roadmap. Um, so it's a really good time whilst we're kind of doing a bit of a planning exercise. Uh, what else? Sorry, I didn't realise I had such a list. Um, if you've been coming to Chat Fridays over the last, I don't know, many, many months that we've been doing them, we've been trying to, we've been talking about how we've been improving our documentation, especially the ACF blocks part of the documentation has always um, been a bit tricky and we we have improved that uh, recently. But one part of the documentation area, and I think this is just typical to all WordPress sites, is the search was pretty rubbish. Um, and we were finding, we were hearing from users where you know they were trying to get uh, started with using blocks, coming to the documentation and just not getting the results they wanted. So um, last week we've, we've actually installed uh, what's called WP Engine Smart Search, which is a product it's available for WP Engine sites or sites hosted with WP Engine on, on hosting plans. Um, and it, it's been installed on the ACF website and it now kind of brings hugely better search results. Um, it also has support for things like natural language search. So you can kind of use the search almost like a chat GPT experience and get back much better results uh, and have just all around better experience using the documentation. So we've done a little write up there on the website, but hopefully that ultimately means that people who want to learn more about using ACF and building specific things with ACF can just find the documentation so much easier to, to navigate and search through. So that is a, a massive intro. Uh, there's no questions in the Q and A at the moment, but feel free if anyone's got one, just un unmute, uh, as I say, use the chat. Ah, uh, yeah, Bojan, you uh, you asked in the chat any news maybe about the ACF blocks interactivity API usage. I was a bit late. Um, we haven't got specific inter uh, integration with the interactivity API, which also launched in WordPress six five. Um, because really, yeah, I was going to yeah, say that's because we don't need to really uh, because we support it in the sense that it's available to you in your in your template because um, you can enqueue your own JavaScript. Uh, I guess the thing we need to do is write some documentation, kind of some some examples of, of things you can do there. Uh, I think Anthony's been playing with it a little bit and, and producing all kinds of cool stuff for some of his side projects, which is which is cool. Uh, but yeah, so essentially we don't need to do anything ACF side because uh, it's it's part of the uh, the template and and your kind of scripts. So yeah, it's already supported. Yeah, I think that's that's always the one where. At the moment, it's understanding the use cases and why we, you'd use it in core and then how you then also use it with ACF and understanding maybe right now, we don't know exactly how people want to use it. And then if they figure out they want to use it in a certain way and perhaps we're not supporting that use case, then we can sort of tweak it. But I think out of the box, it's, yeah, we kind of work because of the block.json method of uh, registering blocks, which is good. And if you have any ideas on how to use it, like please let us know. Because like even I, I haven't seen more than like three use cases that people have, have actually like built and shown a proof of concept of, and a lot of those have been like um like like the one with the movie directory that has the favorites, and you click the heart, and you know it shows how many favorites are across that that object. That's to me the the interactive interactivity API is more like. I don't know, it's almost like meta metadata. It's like just another layer of metadata on top of meta that's not really important to have super accurate number. It's not important for it to, you know, be any functionality on the site. It's just a ticker in a lot of cases is, is the demo I see. Yeah, I see it as more of a, a kind of a, a, basically a modernization of the legacy WP Ajax and, and 
WPA Jacks no priv stuff that we used to have and you know that we still use in, in many cases because it gives you an opportunity to to write you know modern code that lets you send stuff back to the server and, and do whatever you want to with it in a nice modern way so that that's where the the kind of the main benefit comes from I think. Uh, any other questions? Oh, how do we ask a question? N Neil, feel free to unmute. Uh, you can ask the question in person, as it were, or you can use the Q&A feature in Zoom, which is the button next to share screen. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Right. Um, I've got a quick question about ACF. I completely forgot about this meeting, so I've just suddenly jumped in. Um, so I have a site where... We've got about a thousand um, posts of a particular post type, and they've all got a whole load of ACF fields on. And the other day, we needed to add a Boolean value field. So we added it, but then we have to, obviously, um, when we go to grab that field, that field has no value on all of them until it's set. Is there a way to set that value um, into a default state, just like if you were creating a new post, um, rather than them all, rather than having to go into each one and save it uh, in order to set that initial value. The, there isn't right now. Um, I think the way well, we'd... I, actually, I will say that there is, you could do this through some of our filters, right? Uh, we have a uh, load value, which you could set to the uh, so if you you'd have to write a relatively small function essentially that would check on load value check if it was null and then set it to what you want the default to be and actually i know matt is matt's doing his pensive face of hang on i'm looking something up here because it's a good question and i'm not i feel like this there is a way of doing this natively but i'm not 100 percent sure so i don't want to <laughs> don't want to say that okay but the, but the way that... we achieved it was that we we installed another plugin that allowed us to add fields to like quick edit and then we just okay. uh, did select all okay. edit and then select that value and saved it um and it would try and sort of save as many as possible it did time out from time to time but we just kept going until they were all set i, I so oh sorry did the did the Boolean value that was added, was that just supposed to be true for all of them or you just wanted it, like, what did you want it to return for posts where it hadn't been saved before? Uh, so we did set a default of no um, or false. Um, we That would have been fine uh, for now. And then we would go and change a certain posts to yes or true um, as we went along. So it was, it was just, we couldn't check that value because it would just be unset or no value. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, I, I think probably there's some room for improvement in how that Boolean field is set up in the first place because you have we have that default value checkbox in the Boolean field when you set it up in the field group editor. But if that's not checked, then it, it's not going to get a default value, right? Um, so I think like Liam said, probably the best way to go around this is, uh, to get around this is to use filters like, on um, load value or similar, um, okay. but it sounds also like, in your... sorry, sorry go ahead. I was gonna say, you could also do this at the output level. It depends on, on where exactly you needed it, but in your, if you're in your theme code, you basically treat it true as true and then anything else is false, then, then you can achieve it that way as well. Obviously, if you're, you know, depending on if it's outputting to rest or something like that, then that's obviously not an answer. But yeah, yeah. that was going to be my first. Uh, um, yeah, a few times recently because we've added extra fields to post types and had this issue where you have to go back and resave them in order to get the value initialized um, yeah. in in existing records, uh, and it's just taken quite some time. So I just thought I'd ask, but no, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll make sure on the right up here, we, we give an example 
of a function you could use that detects if it's not set and sets the default value for any field. So you've got a quick kind of shorthand to do it in the future. Um, I'll ask Mike to put that in the blog post on early next week. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, any other questions in the chat? Sounds like Phil's uh, question about uh, Nolan Falls is still kind of open. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, Phil's on, Phil's uh, one of the newer engineers actually on the ACF team. I think he's kind of noodling around the answer to Neil's question. Yeah, I'm just trying to trying to figure out um, exactly the, what the, the need there. Um, because if it is null by default, then you've got your false by default as well, if you check it that way. Yeah, as I said, it kind of depends on on the point of output. Um, you know, if you want it out in REST and it needs to be false, then obviously right. null is yeah. different. So it's it's a tough tough to know about knowing exactly where it's going to be used. And presumably, in Neil's case, it changes depending on the field he's added and and where it's being used. Right. So, like Neil, were you were you when you're bulk editing these fields? Are you setting them to false, like for every single post? Sorry, yeah, um, yeah. So we we added it to quick edit, and then we just um, open that up and set it to false. Yeah, um, and then the column would say it would say false or true instead of no value. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I could. I guess we could assume that no value is equal to false, but I guess there could be some scenarios where we couldn't assume that. Right. Yeah. And and this has also happened not just on Boolean values. It could be if we've added a field. Uh, right, yeah. I think my yeah, question that's what I was assuming. Yeah. It I'm just thinking specifically about Boolean, but yeah, if it's a not a Boolean, that's a yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good it, it's good to hear like that as a mini pain point though, Neil, because we have, you know, you have the scenario where you create a field group for I don't know, a custom post type and you've got created the five fields and then you've gone off and created all that data. And then later on, you know, months or years down the line, you want to add new fields to that field group and you, you need to then kind of enrich that data on those exactly. existing post types and the defaults it, it, is something that you kind of always feel like, yes, that should be something that's automatically like propagated through the actual instances of those post types. Um, exactly. which which we don't handle right now but it's good to hear that as a kind of a... Uh, that's yeah. it's one thing i've i've sort of struggled to try and explain to um our junior dev as well that we've added the field to that field type or to that post type but it's not there until it's saved yeah um which yeah. is hard to get your head around yeah so I think I think the, the difficulty with this is we couldn't just change that behavior, right? Because there'll be some people that expect it to be null if it's not set and until it's explicitly defined. So we'd have to figure out a way to kind of make that opt-in behavior or make it something yeah. else, you know. I think that's why the the idea of, of just making it easier and, and you know, document essentially how to, to make that default apply. Because that's 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 all we can, you know, we can do that really easily. We have access to the field, so we know what the default value would be. So yeah, we can uh, we can make that easy uh, from a documentation point of view, I think. And then yeah, if uh, I think this is a good one to post on the feedback board as well, because if, if lots of people start updating it and we see that there's a trend that you know this is confusing for everybody, then it gives us the kind of knowledge to to say that yeah, we yeah. should do something about this and maybe add a new thing that is you know apply default to new values or yeah something like that on the field instead yeah. About the, yeah. the third time I've hit this issue um, yeah. the last few months, and I have looked for documentation on it. Um, I went through a lot of the documentation articles and couldn't find anything. Um, I did, did write a, a function that sort of looped through all, all the posts and just saved them, but it just times out like crazy. Yeah. 
especially yeah. when there are a lot of records when there's like 1500 records it times out yeah yeah no, that's good that's good to um that's a good point about the documentation that we're, we're not sort of explicitly <clears throat> saying that behavior and, and making that clear because like as you say with the junior devs who are perhaps new to acf they don't know that there's there's that disconnect between the field definitions and the field and the data um and it's only because you've done it you know you've done it you know that's the behavior that you you that understand happens. how acf uses it, it works but yeah it's not clear necessarily and i think we see it quite a lot a, another sort of scenario of almost the same example of this disconnect where people have created a field and they've they've called it something and the field name is one thing um and they've gone off and created a load of data for that for that sort of post meta key really based on the field name and then they go and mm -hmm. change the field name renames it yep. and they've, they've lost that data effectively it's not no longer tied to that field definition so you go and edit the post yep. and you now see no data for that field because but, but the data only... is still there under its old name exactly and we don't yep. do a good job of explaining why that's a a bad thing and b potentially how to do you want to link that data to it because you know you probably most people aren't renaming it to jettison all the data they've had before as a way to do that they're actually renaming it because they want to rename the field and they want yeah, to keep the yeah. data i, so I that... definitely definitely hit exactly that issue um yeah. and you suddenly you suddenly panic like you've lost all this data but technically it's not lost you can just rename it back <laughs> but... yeah yeah exactly yeah, so I've, that I've, is... done, I've done that before way you you do that but then uh, it, when you do want to change it, you sort of add a new field with a new name, and then you go and copy everything over, and then delete that old field. So, yeah, yeah. It's, these things would be amazing to have documented and and maybe have. But no, thank you for uh, listening to them. No, no, it's all good. Yeah. I've got I've got a lot of ideas of ways that we can improve this stuff. At the very yeah. least, giving you more information uh, in in WordPress six three, as Ian, Ian talked about earlier. Uh, there's a, a new kind of starting point for us to, to add some some data to site health inside wordpress um and our plan is that you know it's very bare bones in the in this first version but we'll add more and more stuff to that and we'll be able to detect that oh there's a whole bunch of fields with you know that there's some re something wrong essentially that you might not realize um orphan and data and stuff. Bits, yeah orphan data and things like that uh, I, we, you know i think we want to solve that through wp cli commands so yeah, that's it, what I was know, just about to say. I think if you want to, if you want to clear stuff up, we want it to be an action that you have to take. Trying to do anything like that on the UI is it's not something we want to, you know, make possible really. Purely from a, it's way too risky to start messing around with people's data, as you've seen from the UI. Right, anything that's huge, take yeah, we'll time out, and we don't know what host you're on and how performant it is and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's definitely a problem we need to that. solve in some shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got a question here in the sidebar about uh, interactivity API again. Uh, no worries, bringing back the the subject. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think that if so, you should be able to to use the interactivity API. The way to think about it is uh, so you're going to add the supports for interactivity. You're going to set that true, um, but there's a reference. There's a, a, a in the block.json you have a view script module, and that's a reference to a JavaScript file. And that's what runs on the front end that makes the, the the block interactive. So everything that's happening within the block stays the same. It's just that you have this external reference of another JavaScript file that talks to it. So um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm curious if where where you're hitting the the hang up there because it it should work. And if it doesn't, it's good for us to know and we can look into fixing it. Yeah, I I think I tried that, but uh, I think that it doesn't work. What what, okay. what about it? Think... What was happening? I'm curious. Uh, it's uh, I just uh followed the 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 guide for for uh the native blocks uh how to use interactivity inside of it and uh in the ACF blocks it doesn't work. Just just uh I think the interactivity uh library is not loaded within the block. Yeah, so I think that, again, that's something that should be loaded by your your module and your script that you're in including. But I think we can just 
I think we can just throw a, a demo together really quickly that that solves this problem fairly. You know, that gives you an example and a, a kind of weight a base. Uh, so I'll ask Mike to kind of yeah. The, the biggest the thing that it needs the, the biggest thing that it needs from the ACF block side is whatever whatever element you're targeting for interactivity. It just needs to match the ID of whatever it is on the script side that you're referencing, and then on that script side is where you would import your needed packages and things that would do the interactivity stuff. Um, but yeah, we, we can, we can spin up a demo and, and make a. Yeah. This is one of the problems with blocks in my opinion is how difficult it is to know when something has gone wrong in scripts and, and styles and things like that. Cause it, you basically get no feedback. You, you, you could basically only figure it out by, you know, adding a whole bunch of debug commands and seeing what turns up in your browser console. So. I, it's a shame that that's not easy. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's, no just, shame. Maybe that's how you are supposed to do it. Yeah, I'll be happy to see that example. So, thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get an example of that one, and then the other one that I've been working on is the query loop uh, variations, so that you could in your query loop factor in ACF data. So that's another one that's on the horizon soon. Yeah, sounds good. I know. Uh, I know our, our DevRel team at WP Engine have put together a, an example block that uses the interactivity API. So we might even just take that, wrap it in an ACF block, and good just, idea. Yeah, you know, we can show you that in half an hour or an hour's work. So stay tuned. We'll throw something up soon on, on that. Yeah, and if we can link to it in the show show notes, the blog post that goes out on Monday or Tuesday next week about this, then that's a good good place to reference it, version in the future. Yeah, sounds good. Excellent. Uh, it'd be you. useful for us. You know, we, I don't think many of us, obviously, Ant's experiment do it a lot. I don't think any of us have actually gone deep into it. So we'll want to confirm that it does work because we're, we're telling people it does. We're going to have like 20,000 movie directory listings made. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we are using that, by the way, as well uh, for simple, simple things. Uh, we're using Al Alpine JS at the moment. For okay. Apps. Yeah. We've... Um, We've seen a few uh, a few folks using additional libraries on top of ACF blocks. We made some changes in, in the six one cycle, I think, that made it work. Basically, you you, you, know, you you never used to be able to make uh, custom HTML attributes that your you know, your non React library could pick up. It's uh, it's good to know what people are using. Right? Yeah, I'm just digging out. Uh... We've had reports of issues with Alpine JS and the block editor, so I'm just double checking where we are with that, whether or not that makes it. If it's yeah, been I think, fixed, I think we've solved them all. But uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming you're able to use ACF blocks fine. It's just the interactivity bit that wasn't working for you. Yep. Sorry, was the question for me? Oh. Yeah, I, Can Ian repeat, was please? mentioning he wasn't sure if we supported Alpine. Uh, I think we do. Uh, you know, in ACF blocks. You can you can add whatever elements you need to that are Alpine. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We, are, we are we are using uh, Alpine JS at the moment for for some uh, small uh, uh, actions or or uh, animations, whatever. Nice. But uh, but uh, we are trying to 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 look into the interactivity, uh, so maybe we will switch to 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 the. The uh, new functionality, the WordPress, and uh, this is the the, the first uh, wall we hit. Okay, no worries. Well, yeah, give us a, give us a couple of days, and we'll uh, we'll get we'll tweet some more info. So uh, watch Twitter. Okay. Or X Thanks. now. Sorry, I'm not allowed to call it Twitter. Am I? You on the show on me. Thank you. Any more, any more questions or things that people want to talk about? Um, I, um, amongst my multiple updates at the start of the 
the um, session, I was talking about 6.3 and the block the block improvements that are coming there, but we've also got a couple of other things coming for 6.3, which we can happily demo, uh, which would be quite nice. There's, um, there's an improvement to how custom post types and options pages regist are registered um, specifically around like the menu icon. It's a really, really bad user experience right now. Um, when you want to register a post type and change the menu icon, uh, if you want to use the dash icons that WordPress uses in the you know in in the existing menus, you've got to go and find the dash icon string. Whereas six three is bringing a, a much improved experience and a lovely icon picker um, that's that is used in registering custom post types and options pages if you're using ACF Pro. Um, so I'm just gonna. See, Phil, are you are you good to do a quick demo, and then we can, like, yeah, yeah. people sure. might think of questions during the demo. Sure. Nice. Yeah. A screen share here. I just have to do it this way. You guys see this okay? Yes. Cool. So yeah, this is the uh, the icon picker Ian mentioned there. So if I go to ACF and post types, and then I one of my post types here. Um, now under the visibility tab, you can choose the icon, the dash icon that you want. So you can see the icon I've picked here is the one that's showing up here in the sidebar. And so if I just want to pick a different one, I can... Just select that, and then you can see it changes once I save. So that's a lot simpler because prior to this, you had to type in the exact dash icon string. So you'd go look for it and then um, type in the right thing. But you also have the option of uh, using things from your media library. Um, I have some not great <laughs> example images here, but uh, if you save it, you can see it just uses that image. Um, so that that's also a lot simpler and then if you want to um, use a, a custom URL to a to an image, you can do that as well, and it'll show up there. So it's a lot, a lot smoother, a lot simpler, um, and we've done a lot of uh, work on this to make sure it's an accessible field as well, so you can navigate it all with your keyboard um, and choose uh, your icon. Um, you can search for the icon that you would want. So you do like a home, and it just narrows it down for you. Um, so yeah, there's a lot a lot of uh, simplification there, I think, um, in making this easier. And we've also applied it for options pages as well. So um, if you have an options page, um, it's also showing as the, the option there. So you can see I've got this lock icon chosen and down here, that's the, the icon that it's using. And if I change that and save it, then it's updated in my sidebar as well. So that's that. Yeah, that's the uh, the icon picker uh, UI that's coming for options pages and post types. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. So much of a better experience than having to remember string name names of classes for dash icons or having to go off to another website. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a um, lot simpler. Yeah, I like uh, using it myself. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, nice to see all the available dash icons, right? And you could just, yeah. I think we are potentially going to make it a public field as well. We're just doing some tweaks to make that some, that's something that can be used as an ACF field type. So if you're maybe building out designs for your clients, either in the admin or the, or the front end, and you rely on dash icons or other icons, this is a really nice, handy, picker experience for your clients to edit you know add a paragraph add a title select an icon from the from this dash icons or, or add an icon and this is the way acf is built we consume our own fields to build our own settings pages so this is now the gives us the ability to make this a public field type um to to use so kind of in gives everybody a better editing experience yeah, and you can see you can see that there's a 
a future path for this field type as well, right? If uh, you know you can add new tabs, but you want to load Font Awesome and load each of their icons in, then uh, it's not. Yeah, you know, phase two would would be nice to enable that uh, and let you know plugin devs and theme devs do uh do add a, add or remove additional things here. So I think it's yeah. a a good sort of foundation as well. Yeah, definitely. I love the fact that we've we built this out from an accessibility kind of first point of view and not not as an afterthought. So it's yeah, as Phil said it and demoed, it's really easy to navigate if you're, you know, using the keyboard or screen readers. Um because there's quite a few users using ACF and I think we want to make it accessible for all. Um, let me just check. Anybody has anybody else popped up any questions? Where are we? No, I think we're. I mean, we've got five minutes left on the clock, so maybe last call for any questions, and we can just uh, maybe wrap up. Good session today. Yeah, totally. A lot of good questions. Thanks for all of them. Nice. Yeah, and good to we can go away and do some um, quick proof of concept with the interactivity API um, and hopefully answer some questions afterwards. Awesome. Well, yeah, brilliant. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. We'll wrap it up now. We'll see you in a couple of weeks for another ACF Chat Fridays. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah.